Hello, happy Friday. And uh, it's a time for us to uh, meet each other in the Facebook. <coughs> so you may probably realize that for the last couple of days, I haven't been in the show for a while. And uh, you may wonder uh, what's happened. Actually, I've been traveling and we've been organizing some big conference in New York City. And I have the, all the world expert in the fertility uh, visit us and uh, had this meeting. That's why I was away for a few days. And uh, here, actually, I have my friend, Dr. Holio from Brazil. He also attended this conference, and I invited him to come to our <coughs> center, being our guest. So two of us will give you some kind of update about what we talk about uh, in uh, this uh, world-class fertility conference. Then you will say, wait a moment, wait a moment. This is a meeting for your doctors and scientists, maybe too scientific. We probably won't understand anything. I mean, that's probably true, but the subject is all about how to make more babies, how successful can make a baby. So I think I would really like to share with you what is going on in our side, clinically and uh, scientifically. So, thank you, Dr. Zhang, for the invitation. It was uh, I'm Dr. Julie Vojet from Brazil, and I followed the, the um, I followed the technique that Dr. Zhang trained me in mini IVF, minimal stimulation, and I'm very happy because mm -hmm. the Congress was very rich Congress and the mm -hmm. scientific level, scientific level mm -hmm. was very very interesting. One, uh, we were in a dinner and one of your main, main worries was what do we have as a message to take home all, all these specialists gave us. And I'm very happy that I'm mm. really taking home many, many news and, and, and ways of treating and taking care of our patients to get pregnant. Yeah. So the meeting trying to be in a good balance between science and uh, clinical work. And uh, let's take this opportunity to introduce some of the main topics in the meeting. Yes. And I also I can also review it with you too. We take this opportunity. So the first day of the meeting actually started by talking about how we can treat age-related infertility and how to fight with the aging actually because the way to treat infertility also related to how to have a, a better quality of life with a uh, increase of age and how to deal with aging and fertility and how to raise a child to keep yourself fit. That was the very first uh, part of uh, the subject. We feel that to create a, a baby is a create a family and create a family is a, also including the uh, child education and uh, the well-being of the parents and the kids. So it's a really very important to look at the whole family. So longevity, health, during the uh, with healthy aging and fertility are all important, not just making babies. So come back to the very beginning of the talk. We were very um, fortunate to have a world expert, Dr. Jerry Shelton, and we discussed about uh, where we are. So we're in a very exciting moment. Many new technologies being developed to treat the infertility, and uh, such as uh, pre-implantation genetic screen test, such as optimal stimulation of the ovaries mm -hmm. or fertility for IVF treatment, such as a new fertility preservation technology for the cancer patient. Really, really, mm -hmm. really very, very important important advances and yeah. information that they showed that we can really uh, uh, have um, expect expectations yeah. with this treatment for these cancer patients. Yeah. So first let's uh, discuss about it. So what's new, what, what is a cooking and what kind of new technology maybe one day benefit everyone. So as far as the cutting edge technology is mainly concerned in the ladies with advanced maternal age. And as you may remember, 
I think the three topics was very interesting. One is the ovarian rejuvenation. Yes. And secondly, artificial gametes. And yes. thirdly, artificial ovaries. So first, first of all, let's talk about ovarian rejuvenation. One percent of the population suffer from premature ovarian failure, meaning yeah. that they uh, almost undergo menopause at the age has not reached to 40 years. And the new studies show they still have some residual eggs in these ovaries, but just the mother nature automatically shut, lock this egg to grow. So even though they still have some eggs, but they don't ovulate, and that's why they can't make babies. So there's a new technology actually come out that can wake up, wake up the ovaries, wake up the ovaries. So let some residual eggs continue to grow. There are many, many different ways called in vitro activation of the ovarian tissues, and some doubt that you call the rejuvenation of ovaries. But it seems that this is a very promising technique and we also uh, start doing some clinical uh, trial case is to have this patient with less than 40 years old yes. with uh, <coughs> three to five years of amenorrhea, meaning they haven't had a period for three to four years and FSH above 75, to doing a special surgical procedure mm -hmm. mechanically to reduce the pressure of the ovaries and allow this remaining follicle to grow. And the pregnancy rate is still low, but it seems very promising. So at least the approach is very interesting to oh, rejuvenate the ovaries. And it is very important for the patients, for who's, who's uh, watching us. As, as, as younger the patient, younger, uh, more the chances that we could get uh, even a natural pregnancy after this this technique. Yes, exactly. So that yeah. is very important. It is not for all the patients. Patients maybe with 43, 44, they will have mm. some residual eggs, but the chances of, of having ovulation exist, but yes. the chances of getting pregnant, they are equally to a, a, a 43 years old women so the potential of that egg is not so good as when the patient with mm, a premature ovarian failure has less than 40 years or less than 35 years. I actually, in Brazil, treat many, many patients mm -hmm. that are near with very low AMH, 0.1, 0.2, that maybe in a year they will be suitable for this kind of treatment. And for now, it is ex it is still being experimental, so yeah. that's important for the patients know that we are studying this, but it's not actually a, a, a very known and for everybody now yeah. this this kind of treatment. Yeah. So the rejuvenation is a definitely one of the approach, and it seems that three percent of the patient eventually have a baby. Now you can argue maybe they will have a baby even without doing anything. That's yes. possible. But well, this is something very interesting and promising about ovarian and rejuvenation. And second, uh, something which I think is really interesting is to, um, <clears throat> actually I just want to emphasize one more thing. I think of some of our patients here may asking what is the AMH? AMH is anti yes. hormone and uh, produced by the small follicles. By the way, many new studies show AMH does not tell you the quality of the egg. The exactly. only thing to tell you if you have a baby is your age. None of the tests is even, even close to tell you the quality of the egg if you'll be pregnant or not. So do not think AMH is the key to know if you are going to be pregnant, have a baby or not. Or not. AMH really just tell you your, what kind of ovarian reserve, what kind of remaining eggs you might have. But the quality, repeat again, is determined by your age. So, anything else interesting you think we should let our oh, patient to share? What, we, what I think it was very, very important too was um, the information presented about the, the potential of the natural cycle, mm -hmm. IVF. Oh, so, it showed us that the potential of those eggs naturally selected is very high mm -hmm. in co co when we compare it to the big number when you yeah. assimilate with high doses. Yeah, true. So our colleague Dr. Kano from Japan reviewed uh, about the last 10 years of the 
IVR cycle done by natural cycle, meaning the lady does not get any medication, only collect the very only egg, which is a very unique technique which we are doing here too for the ladies with low ovarian reserve or advanced maternal age. So for the lady at the age of 40 or younger, over across the board, in the natural cycle IVF means that they collect an egg from the lady never get any mm. medics thing, any medication. Yes. The chances the egg make a baby is about 26%. But take the uh, index control study from many publications that the average chance each egg make a baby through the heavy injections, multiple egg produ production is only about 5.6%. Yes. So it's uh, a major difference. Well, oh, there were many technical things too that we that we saw. There are more for embryology development, for technology in analysis mm -hmm. of the embryos, new technologies analyzing the the new technology for uh, to know exactly the information and the potential of the information that these G embryos have. So to select the best embryo to transfer. So um, we reviewed this information with Dr. Um, Santiago Munet mm -hmm. too, it was a very interesting. Everything leading us to selecting the best embryo to have the best pregnancy rates. Right. So talk about uh, this PGS, very popular and uh, very well discussed uh, com um, topic of these couple of days is about uh, mosaic and uh, mosaic embryos or the abnormal embryos where they still can make babies. So in this conference, we invited the three experts from the world and to discuss about this. So mosaicism meaning that uh, when you test the genetic normality of uh, cells, some cells of these, these cells are normal, some say no, not normal. So that's called uh, uh, mosaicism. So if I test the five, cells to check their DNA, and two of the five cells said yes, three of the five cells said no, that's called a mosaicism. We don't know too much about the mosaicism, but numbers are easy to explain, and some of these embryos are still very good, you can make a baby, so you can transfer, and overall about 15% of these eggs can make live birth babies. So PGS still are very, very useful, technique in the eventually will become a routine but we start we needed to start to learn how to interpret yeah. the results mm -hmm. did you remember one of speaker also discuss a non-invasive pgs yes yeah. that was would you be able to explain to our uh, oh. audience a little bit what is a non-invasive pgs no, when we when we do pgs we take a little cell of the embryos then we mm -hmm. have to to take it's a few number of eggs or a few number of cells so what we want to what, what is being developed non-invasive pgs is how to understand what's the information that that embryo has without the need of taking these cells so the when the embryos are developing in our labs they're developing in a culture media and it seems that they free some information so what the, the non-invasive PGS is the analysis of this information is the same information that the embryo has but it has in the cultural media and we do not have to uh, to take the mm -hmm. cells from the embryo so we can have this information without touching the embryo what will leave our embryo natural almost naturally and we will have this information this is not uh, this has been studied too. Yeah. Uh, we don't have this technology yet, mm -hmm. um, only for in, during a studies. Yeah. But uh, I think that this might be the future to yeah. know which embryo is going to be the best without having to do a biopsy. It is, yeah, I think uh, it's a very close to clinical application. The false negative rate is almost zero. Means if this embryo determined to be no problem, almost accurate. False positive is still about 18%, so we're going to reduce, meaning that if I say this embryo is normal, there's an 18% chance it actually is not normal. But that part is being working on. But the overall, uh, as Julio said, it's definitely going to be the trend. The very soon we should do the embryo testing on every single embryo genetically, and it will be done with very little medicine. 
and that's called a natural cycle um, doing a genetic test yes. on the embryos. Yes. Well, I think it was a very a great conference. I'm very happy to be invited by you for this conference. Thank you. For the, mm. for, the, for the meeting, and I hope to be next year at the uh, beginning of October. Yeah. We'll, be, be, we'll, be, we will be sharing the next year the uh, information, technology. the cutting technology. Right. Thank you, Dr. Zeng. Thank you. Thank you and for the invitation yeah. and for being in your page. For the for the Brazilian uh, patients that are are, are uh, watching us, we are in the <laughs> two we are in two live videos from the people for to Brazil and for the New Yorkers and the American people. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. Thank See you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you the next time. Bye.